Good morning. Buenos dias, everybody. Hope you are having a good morning. Uh, it's kind of nice getting up a little bit later this morning. Uh, we're not at 7 a.m. anymore. We're now at the 10 a.m. slot, but uh, uh, I did miss the watching the sunrise, although that's about time I woke up. But uh, it's great to have you with us this morning, and I look forward to getting into our study. We're going to actually be starting a series on uh, heroes of faith, and uh, and I've just happened to have been uh, studying lately the, the book of Daniel and Daniel's life. So that's what we're going to jump into. Of course, you know, we've had kind of a, a theme this week uh, because of all that's going on around the world with the coronavirus and, and, and how it's affecting everybody. And we've been going to the scriptures really to find strength and find direction and and knowing how to set our hearts and minds. And this kind of, this, this, this series will fall in line with that as well. I think it'll be great. I think it'll be inspiring. It'll be encouraging. Of course, the natural theme this week has been faith, not fear, or peace, not panic. Um, and uh, for the very reason of what we just talked about. And, and I think these, the studies that we're going to do, I think you're going to find uh, very encouraging. So let's start out with a little prayer. And uh, just to get our hearts ready and our minds ready for studying the Word of God. And uh, then we'll jump on in. So let's pray. Father God, thank you for uh, just loving us and being always available, God. Always being in the room. Always being present. And help us to be mindful of that. Help us now to open our hearts and our minds as we open our Bibles. As we turn them on, help us to be ready to hear your voice and to be directed by your Spirit and allow ourselves to be changed. Help us to have that soft heart that your word gets in and transforms and not to be hard-hearted and, and not be unchanging and, and indifferent, but to really be sensitive to your spirit, God. We love you. We ask that you bless our time to study in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, great. So um, uh, let's start out with a uh, scripture we used on Sunday. Philippians 2.12, and this has kind of been the theme scripture, I would say, for the week, is, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And and I say it's it's been a theme. Uh, there's been several theme scriptures, actually, oddly enough, out of Philippians 2 uh, as well. Um, this one in particular, I think because in a lot of ways, we've had to adjust how we do Christianity, how we do our faith, how we practice our faith, you know? What is our, uh, not only what is our belief, our orthodoxy, but what is our orthopraxy? How do we how do we practice our faith and what we're doing? Um, and and it, it really kind of reveals character, you know? The, the old saying, character is who you are when no one is, is watching. And uh, this scripture, you know, Paul admonishes the church or encourages the church to continue in their obedience. You know, he said, look, you've always obeyed when I was there, when I wasn't there, because it's your conviction. You know, and I remember uh, as a young Christian, I I uh, moved away from the church where I became a Christian in San Diego. I uh, went off for a year back home, I went back home for a year. And I went to churches, but we didn't have a church, not in our, you know, one of our fellowship uh, in my area, and I had to just hang in there, and and it was funny because in my naivete, I it never crossed my mind that I would fall away, or that I would leave the Lord because I was a brand new Christian, so excited, and I learned a ton that first year, but definitely had to fight for my faith without the uh, normal uh, structure, spiritual structure around me of meetings and gatherings and fellowship time and all the things that we normally have. And that's kind of what, you know, Paul's talking about here. So now much more, my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And always I had this, I had this feeling that this is my salvation that I'm fighting for, and it's not anybody else's responsibility. And I think taking responsibility for our spiritual condition, no matter the challenges, no matter the situation, no matter what's going on around us, no matter what anybody does to us, is is a conviction we all have to grow in. And that's what I think Paul was talking about here, um, that we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling or with our our own re respect and, and awe of God. You know, we talked about that last week 
uh, the the healthy fear that we should have, and how God blesses that. That which another way of saying is reverence for the Lord, and and that's how we should always be aware. I'm I'm standing in reverence of God. I'm standing in the presence of God, whether I'm at church or at home or anywhere else. And this week, because we're a lot of us are stuck at home. Um, you know, those of us all in, in the Los Angeles area, California, and now in many states in New York and, and many countries in Spain and Italy and, and countries around the world are in the sort of a lockdown, you know, a stay at home policy. And we're finding out, you know, we're going to run into what is our conviction? What do we really believe? Who am I? What is, what is my belief? So this is really a, a great study. Uh, so we're going to jump right on in the book of Daniel um, and a, a little background in case you're not real familiar with the book of Daniel. Of course, the, uh, I'll start with where, where do we start? The Jews are led out of Egypt um, by Moses. Joshua leads them in to take the promised land. Uh, they take the promised land. It's a time of judges. Um, they're setting up their, their, the land to be theirs as God had gifted it to them. Then they want to be like everyone else. They have a king. So they start with King Saul, then David, then Solomon. Um, then there's a split and there's two kingdoms. And, um, you know, like as many times, unfortunately, in the time of prosperity, they drift from God and, and one, uh, neglecting the poor and not taking care of each other, uh, in the north in Israel, as well as, um, as well as they start turning to false gods, the gods that of the people who'd lived there formerly. And, um, and God warns them and warns them and warns them in Israel that they're going to get wiped out because the 10 tribes are in Israel and they don't repent and they get wiped out. They disappear forever. And, and then Judah, who's in the South, that's the lower kingdom. And, and, uh, it's more, their hearts are just far from God. They're going through the motions. They're, they have Jerusalem, they're going, they're doing everything, but their hearts are far from God. And sooner or later, they get conquered as well. And a custom of the conquerors, in this case, the Babylonians, uh, is to take the royal family and put them in the palace of the conqueror. And and that's how da- Daniel ends up in the palace with Nebuchadnezzar and the kings uh, there. And uh, it's not just him. There's, there's actually four of them together. There's Daniel, there's... Uh, uh, Mishael, Azar- Azariah, and Hanana, um, these four men who later on become Belteshazzar, Daniel. Well, we call them Daniel all the time, but we probably know the other three better by their their given names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, but they are princes of Judah. They're princes of Jerusalem. And um, there they are in in the palace of a foreign country, of a conquering country. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, being a Jew is defined by their actions and their and their their convictions, and there's no system around them to support them. It's them and God, and really, ultimately, that's what your religion is. It's it's you and God. It's it's who it's what you believe, and strong enough that it dictates your actions. That's your conviction. Your conviction is what actually guides you into action. And we can say whatever we want. I mean, somebody can say they're a Christian, but if they're not loving, if they're not out there loving people and forgiving people and serving people, it's just words, right? It's it's, it's the things we believe strong enough to dictate and guide our actions. That's the real religion. That's who we really are, right? So we start in Daniel and, and we'll read in uh, verse one. It says, it pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule. We're, we're starting in chapter six. I'm sorry. Verse one, chapter six. Um, it pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom with three administrators over them. One of them was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of the government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. And 
you know, I love this because this is our, this is, you know, we're already in chapter six and, and a lot has happened already. You've, you've, you've had them, uh, where they, where they come in, they, 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 they ask to be, uh, set aside in terms of their dietary restriction. They don't want to eat what everybody else eats. And of course, then there's visions. And of course, there's the, the, the golden, uh, statue and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego stand out as they will not bow down to it. Uh, Daniel's already stood them out in, in a sense, uh, sh- shown their difference by what they would eat or not eat. Um, God gives them a certain amount, a gift of the, being able to interpret dreams that stands out. So these guys are already standing out. But what I love here that says is that, that, um, it says now in verse three, now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities. You know, what were those qualities you think? Think about that. What do you think made him stand out? You know, that these qualities. And of course, at the end it says they could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. He couldn't be bribed. He was totally trustworthy and he wasn't negligent. He was on top of things. He was he was excellent in all that he did. And what I what I love about the Christian life. And about the life of a spiritual person is that we're different. We stand out. You know, the fact that we won't lie, that we speak the truth, the fact that we will forgive, the fact that we will 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 give, that we will uh, be compassionate, that these qualities, although everybody admires them, it's not the qualities that are that are common out there. Uh, the fact that we that we try not to react, and I'm not saying by any means that Christians are perfect, but we're always striving for these higher qualities. We're always trying to take the high road, no matter what anybody else does, and 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 probably nothing shows that more than how somebody reacts to circumstances. Right? I would always tell my son when he would play soccer. You know, the guy who always gets in trouble isn't the guy who punched somebody or pinched somebody in the game. It's the guy who got pinched and then turns around and slugs somebody. That guy's the guy that gets caught. It's the reactor. It's the one who retaliates. That's always the one who gets caught. And even in, in, in we've seen throughout history, when people mess up in leadership and politics or something, the country will forgive them for messing up. But if they lie about it, if their reaction is to lie and be defensive, that the country will not forgive. And that's what gets people in trouble. And, and so that reaction, that what do you do in tough situations, or what do you do when you're in trouble, or when you're in a, uh, you know, a, a problem thing, you know, and that, those qualities, those characteristics, they shine. And, and God, I believe, holds them up, puts the spotlight on them. He says, I will make your righteousness shine, shine like the noonday sun. You know, he he highlights that and shows that about us. Um, <clears throat> I remember when working with Hope, you know, the, a lot of the first year was just rebuilding trust and confidence and relationship the, with the church. And and um, so we, we set out to have three and we wrote them really huge on the wall in really big, shiny, pretty letters what our motto would be, which would be ex- ex- excellence, uh, integrity, and compassion. We wanted to be known for being an organization that had integrity. If you give your money to someplace, you want to be able to trust that they're going to have integrity with it. They're going to be honest and do what was right with it. And it wasn't just a little catchphrase to win people's trust. It's who we wanted to be in all that we do is that we would have integrity, that we would be excellent, that we wouldn't be sloppy, that we wouldn't be careless, that we wouldn't be just a bunch of good old boys trying to do some stuff, but we'd actually be excellent in all that we did. And people want to know that their that their sacrifice or donations are being handled well. And then, of course, most importantly, we wanted to be an organization of compassion. In fact, we even when we started, we talked about a, we were a movement of compassion a compassionate movement in the church to move the church to be able to have compassion for the whole world. And that that was our motto. So I would ask you, what's your motto? What's your motto? What are the guiding principles that, that guide your actions right now? That especially right now that we're, you know, a lot of us were in the house right now and we're in the house with our families, with our spouse, with our kids, 
you know, what's what what actions are guiding you along or what convictions, I should say, are guiding your actions. And that that that's incredibly important. Let's let's jump forward. Uh, so these guys, these satrap guys are bad guys are trying to get them right. Um, and so they know that there's nothing. They're not going to find any fault with Daniel because he's honest. He keeps doing what's right. He can't be bribed. Um and of course, that's there. It is again. That's your real faith, your real conviction. Who you really are is who you are alone before God. Uh, another way to think of it is when we stand before God, it's only the real us, right? There's no games. There's no pretending. It's just the real us. And and they realize that this guy's this guy's for real. This guy is not playing games. We're not going to be able to bribe him. We're going to have to catch him something in his religion. Of course, they set him up, right? So these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, May King Darius live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors, governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being a human being during the next 30 days except to you your majesty shall be thrown into the lion's den now your majesty issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the medes and persians which cannot be repealed so king darius put the decree in writing Okay, so there's always going to be opposition. These guys are conniving. I mean, these these are your classic evil dudes here going in there, trying to set up Daniel to get in trouble, trying to use his righteousness against him, which is what Satan always does. He tries to use our righteousness against us and tries to make, I mean, he goes all the way. He'll try to make even doing what's right look like it's doing what's wrong. And that's basically what they were doing, was trying to make it look like, Daniel's devotion to God was really a rebellion against the king, you know, doing wrong. God, or Satan loves doing that. He loves switching the table, so to speak, making look things that are right look like they're wrong. Making, you know, somebody who stands up for Jesus, trying to make them look like they're just narrow-minded and backward and, and you know, old school or something. Make somebody who stands for truth and honesty and purity as somebody who's backwards and old school and doesn't know what's going on. And it's just, it's just totally classic what Satan does. So, so there they are. He's set up for this and they're going after him. Um, So then we read in verse 10, we'll jump ahead to verse 10. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home and think about this. When you find out, you hear, okay, you, you are not allowed to pray to any other God. You know, Daniel had a moment. He had to think about this. Okay. So nobody wants, this is no longer popular. This is no longer going to be respected. In fact, this is going to be seen as something evil. I think as Christians, we're going to face that moment a lot. You know, some of the things the Bible teaches are just not popular. They're just not what everybody else thinks. And, and, we're going to be facing that that situation many times where do I do what's right or do I go with what's popular? Do I, do I go with what people are going to feel good about? And, you know, most of us, most of us, I know I am, uh, most of us are conflict avoiders. And we, 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 we hate conflict. We don't want to be the one that's being different. We don't want to be the one that looks bad. Uh, I know when, you know, if I pick one of the th- things that bothers me most is when I'm falsely accused of something, when somebody believes a lie about me, that can just bug me for days. I could have nightmares about that. And, and that's just part of leadership though. People will misinterpret. People will say things and accuse you of things that you're not even doing or you're not even intending. And no matter how hard you try to serve in love, there'll always be somebody who accuses you of taking advantage of people or doing something bad. And that's just, that's those are all just Satan's tactics to get at us. Whatever bugs us, whatever bothers us, he's going to throw it after us. So, but here's Daniel. He hears the decree. He knows, oh boy, this is not going to look good. But so what does he do? Now, <laughs> you love, I love what he does. Says, he went home to his to his upstairs room where the window where the windows opened towards Jerusalem three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed giving thanks to his god just as he had done before 
You know, now the, the decree just got published. You can't pray to anybody else except the king, King Darius. And what does Daniel do? He goes down in his closet and prays so that nobody can see him. No, <laughs> he goes right out to the window, faces Jerusalem and prays. Now, I, I want to point this out. It wasn't like he was pushing for a fight. He didn't go out on the patio to make sure everybody saw him. He didn't start doing this when he heard that. It said it was his custom, but he did not back down from his prayers. He prayed three times a day, and and it says, Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. You know, So, of course, they, they catch him doing what's right, and they're coming after him. You know, and and Daniel knew it. He he knew he was set up. He knew that this was going to be tough. This is going to be a fight. This is going to be a conflict. But he didn't avoid it. He didn't stop. He didn't alter. He didn't. You know, he did what was right. And again, that's the challenge we have: is to no matter what, do what is right. Do what is good. And no matter what the possible consequences are. That's faith. That's trusting God. That's trusting him in all situations. So we jump ahead to verse 16. All this is chapter 6. So the king gave the order and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually rescue you. You know, the king, he's not happy about this. He loves Daniel. He put Daniel in charge of so much. But he has to obey his own law, and the law is a law. And he says, and he says to him, "May your God, whom you serve continually, again, there you go. There's Daniel's reputation. He's constantly serving God. The king knew that, even though he was serving the king as his employee, as his as his servant. Um, but the king knew him as a person who's constantly serving God. What a great reputation to have." And in verse 7, a stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. So, you know, the door shut, Daniel's thrown into a cave with lions, and the king seals the cave, and there's other guys' seals put on there. And so... It says, then the, the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating, without any entertainment being brought to him. And he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. You know, the king, I mean, he's bound by the law too. And he goes back to the palace. He's having a horrible night. He knows this is wrong. He doesn't want to do this, but it has to be done. And he's not sleeping. He's not eating. And in verse 20, when he came to the lion's den, and I love this because you, you know you can you 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 can feel through the through the scriptures the king's heart he it says he it says he called to Daniel in an anguished voice his heart was hurting for Daniel it's so much respect for Daniel so much appreciation for Daniel Daniel had endeared himself to him why because he was honest because he was a man of integrity he was authentic in his faith using a modern idea he was he was real he was he was the real thing and 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 you you know people of character people of of respect can't help but to be drawn to that even if they don't agree with your doctrine they 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 can't help but to admire honesty and integrity and and character and with an anguished voice he cries out this is daniel servant of the living god has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? I mean, even 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 uh, Darius's faith is struggling here. He's like, God, please rescue this guy. And he's asking Daniel, did, did he do it? Was he able? Is your God that powerful? And I love, you know, Daniel answers, may the king live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I done any wrong before you, before your majesty. You know, and, and this is the beautiful thing is, again, Daniel's, uh, God's always first. He says, I haven't done anything wrong with God, so God rescued me, and I also haven't done anything wrong with you. And, and you know, and he clears his name, says, look, God, God shows, God reveals, 
God makes the truth clear. He always does, sooner or later, sometimes later than sooner. And that's the hard part. That requires even more faith, but sometimes sooner than later. And it was pretty quick here. And God showed him, you know, there's a classic painting. There are many paintings. I love this this one where Daniel's, uh, I, I don't know if he's praying or he's telling the lions to back off or, or what exactly, but uh, you see him just standing there before them, ready with arms in the back, you know. And this is, this is the faith we need to all be building. This is the faith that we all need to be focused on, and especially this time that we have maybe a little more time to read our Bibles, maybe some time to read some good books, um, maybe some time to to dig a little deeper and to grow our roots. You know, in the winter, there's there's no leaves growing, there's no flowers on the trees, there's no. But what is happening is the roots are growing. And then in the spring, the flowers and the leaves and the roots aren't growing so much. And and because we're not out on the streets and we're not out there doing things, maybe this is time to grow roots. Maybe this is time to dig deeper. You know, we want to have the kind of walk with God that I mentioned the other day, that when I'm tired, he refreshes me. That when I'm hurting, he heals me. When I'm afraid, he gives me peace. When I'm lonely, he accompanies me. When I'm weak, he strengthens me. When I'm tempted, he empowers me. When I'm broke, he fixes me. When I'm lost, he guides me. When I'm lacking, he fulfills me. And when I'm overpowered, he empowers me. This is the kind of relationship we want to have. And yeah, absolutely doable. Absolutely doable. But it it is a very intentional relationship with God. It's an intentional faith that's built over time and experience and 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 going out on a limb and stepping out and and reading and studying and writing notes and listening and meditating the more we put into it the more we get out of it you know i think i, I want to close out with these scriptures um that i think are just great scriptures especially for now isaiah 43 1 through 3 don't be afraid for i have redeemed you I am calling you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through water, I will be with you. When you pass through rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you will not be scorched. The flame will not burn you, for I am Yahweh, your God. You know, and I did translate the word Yahweh. It's in there. It's in the Hebrew. Um, I think the, the regular NIV just is, for I am the Lord, your God. But I, but I, 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 I translate it because it's in the Hebrew. And he uses his name that is sacred and holy. You know, that he's letting him, letting us know, look, I, Yahweh, I am with you. I am your God. And he's and he's making that commitment to us. And and I and this scripture, which I think would be a great memory scripture, uh, you know, hands up for all of you who memorized Psalm 23. Uh, great job. And now I, I offer this one as a as a scripture for the week, Exodus 15:2. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. I think that's a great memory scripture. It's also a prayer. It's also a great way to start out a prayer. The Lord is my strength, my song. He has become my salvation. This is my God. I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. And a great memory scripture for this week. And in, in closing thoughts, I want, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe. I still, according to my website, 70% are not subscribed. So please subscribe. It's that button right there, a little red arrow pointing to. And if you uh, want some great music, I've shared before, it's, uh, it's on uh, uh, Spotify. You look up Robert Creel, Quiet Time. And a great playlist there. And if you got some suggested songs that go with those well, I'd love to hear more. And I'd love to have more ideas and love to have that be about three hours of music. It's about an hour of music right now. And then for those of us in the metro region here in Los Angeles, uh, which I think is most of us here this morning, uh, get, remember, if you haven't already, to register on give to metro.com so that we can keep our contribution strong. And we're, we're taking up donations for a food closet to make sure that no one in our ministry uh, is lacking food in any way with all the hardships that are coming ahead of us. And then also I've got a reading book list and uh, lots of other really good stuff on thewayofthepilgrim.com. Uh, that's my personal website. And uh, that's enough for now. Love you guys. Uh, stay safe. 
uh, stay strong, stay spiritual, and stay close to God, and we'll see you tomorrow.